almost there for the Okanagan Graveler. I have my Gravel Factor LS for this race. No aero bars because there's 3,600 meters of elevation. And I'm with Charles. Charles is my mechanic today. We're getting the factor race ready. What's the verdict, Charles? How do you find the bike? Super aero, super light. You just put the number in. Can you explain us what you did? So we took some uh, good old Gorilla tape, black to be more stealth. And now Adam's number plate is super aero and uh, will withstand all the mud he throws at it tomorrow. We'll do a quick bike check just right now. Purity tires, Shimano GRX. We have the clutch here because it's gonna be very bumpy tomorrow, so we need a clutch. At the front, the GRX, super secure. The blacking, super slick, super aero. The factory LS, it looks very good. We have the Silka bottle cage holder. You never lose a bottle in those cages. We don't have it now because we have to fill it up. But that's the Monster Hydro. We're gonna have probably six or seven Monster bottle tomorrow. We have the almost there here to make sure we don't have any problem. That's our hotel for the next two days. We can even cook the oatmeal tomorrow morning. And Charles having the mechanic <laughs> meal. Pizza at 10 p.m. We'll get the bottles ready and after we'll go to sleep. That's the plan. Hey guys, I'm here to do the Okanagan Graveler race recap. First race in Canada of the year. I'm very excited uh, about this recap because deep into my heart, I want a lot more gravel races in Canada and I'm pretty sure the Okanagan Graveler can maybe be our next big race. It's in the Okanagan Valley. It's one of the prettiest place in Canada. In terms of the course, the first course that uh, we were supposed to do was 4,000 meters of elevation, but that course got changed last minute because there was still snow in high altitude. The race is leaving from Big White Mountain and the start is at 8 1,500 meters. So um, the first course was going over some peaks that were higher and those peaks were still full of snow. So um, yeah, we had really last minute change, but it didn't make the course any less challenging and any less uh, beautiful. So um, it all started in a very, very good way because we were all expecting the rain. But finally, it was really cloudy, but you had some very strong sun out of the clouds so everyone in the morning was just like so happy you know it's the best feeling to have all your winter gear and all your raining gear and just give it at someone at the start and know you're not gonna need it so um yeah we started it was still very cold it was six degrees but because the rain was not there everyone was having an amazing time so the way it was set up, you went down a seven kilometer descent and then you took a left on the first gravel sector. I was maybe enjoying myself a little bit too much. I tend to do that, um, especially with smaller races. I don't know, my younger self comes out and uh, I just cannot control myself. I'm having too much fun. So maybe in that moment, I could have used being more careful, but unfortunately, nothing bad happened. So after that first gravel sector, we were actually a group of about maybe 15 to 20 riders. And then we entered the first like really rugged sector. So this sector was like full of, uh, it was not water crossing, but it was maybe large, like a four wheeler track and some part of it had water. And you were on the side of a cliff on one side and on the other side, you had a big wall and that wall was losing rock. So um, those rocks were like fresh and super, super um, sharp. And uh, yeah, I was attacking with uh, Michael Vandenine because it was really technical with the water and the new rocks and the roots. It was really stretching out the group. And I knew that a course like the Okanagan Graveler with that much elevation would favor a lot um, Ian Boswell. So Michael and I just like put the pressure on and we actually had a gap. We were riding good, we couldn't see Ian, but I don't think he was far, it was maybe like 10 seconds back. But I was cranking it and uh, at one point I arrived and there was two lines and I remember thinking like, do I stay on the right or I go on the left? And I decided, oh no, I'm just gonna go on the left and take it smooth. And next thing I know, I had one of the biggest 
probably the biggest sidewall cut that I ever had. So I stopped, put one plug in, it was not working, put two plug in, thought it was working, put the CO2 in, it was not working. Then I put a third plug in and it was not working. So then I just had to wait. I didn't have any tube. That's 100% my bad. I did a whole week in Squamish and um, I don't know. I was confident in that flatting and it didn't happen. Most of the race I don't bring tube, but this one I should have, especially given how rough the course was. People were just passing me and I was asking, hey, do you have an extra tube? Do you have an extra tube? But everyone just pretty much carry one. So finally, I had one guy that's a big fan of the YouTube channel. Shout out to you if you're watching. He stopped and he was like, I got a tube for you. So finally, I was able to put a tube. I didn't have any CO2 left. And so one guy that I actually rode for a good part of the day with gave me his hand pump. We got the tire finally pumped. And at that point, I have been stopped for 45 minutes. So um, yeah, I just changed into TT mode and I told myself I'm just gonna ride 155 BPM pretty much all day so that's my tempo zone and when it's gonna climb I'm just gonna increase the watts to about sweet spot so um, yeah that's what I did I just kept catching people kept catching people kept catching people at one point we had a super technical sector with like super deep not water crossing but you were literally into water every 10 meters so it was like dry water dry water dry water and it was almost like you were in the river but at least the rock you know the the rock river are not bad for flat they're round so uh, they don't cut your tire and after that sector we arrived at the feed zone it was the best feed zone because we had some maple syrup gels and uh, like cookies homemade sandwiches and there was volunteers that were like changing my bottle on my bike so it was actually very fun and just after that feed zone where you enter the most beautiful part of the course so you're pretty much zigzagging into a super small bike path but you're literally on a cliff this part of um, Kelowna is where all the tourists are gonna go it was so pretty like yeah actually you had to be careful because some tourists were walking and also biking so uh, I was glad we were not in a group there because it could have been potentially sketchy. And when you were done with that sector, you had the twisty descent that got you down to Kelowna. So now the altitude was about 500 meters and we had to go back up to uh, 1700 or 1800. So the last three hours was all climbing. I just put my head down. Remember that it was all about effort. The only important things was to do my best. That was the only controllable I had. So I was catching people, catching people. I think I passed from like 15 on the road to like fifth or sixth. And uh, yeah, I crossed the line in fifth place after three hours of climbing. I was still far away from Ian and Michael and Corey. Actually, less than 45 minutes from Michael and Corey. So I guess I took back some times but uh, more than 45 minutes on Ian. So Ian was the one who put on the stronger ride on the day. So um, yeah, at the end, I actually saw my good friend, uh, Jordan Shane, my old teammate from Elevate. We had a good chat. He stays there. I don't know how he does it. You have to climb a 20K climb every day to go back to your house. Honestly, I think this race can get bigger. I hope this race will get bigger. It has everything. Staying at Big White is so good. There's a lot of place to stay so it doesn't get too expensive. And uh, it's just a beautiful area. And I hope next year they're gonna be able to do the crazier course with all the peaks and stuff. And maybe we don't have to do that sharp section because that sharp section where I flatted was not supposed to be on the first course. And other than that section, I wouldn't say it was a course that you could flat on a lot. It was just really that stretch of 20K that was really, really bad for the tires. That's where everyone flatted. Doesn't matter which tire you had. If you took one of those Sharpie Ruck, you were stopping on the side of the road. So um, yeah, that's about it. It was a big day on the bike, uh, almost seven hour at 152 BPM, I think average. I wouldn't say that my form is 100% back. I was not feeling great out there. I think uh, COVID from early last week, I'm still affected. I think uh, my heart and my lungs are not 100% back. Why I know that is that on my whoop, I can see that my resting heart rate is still higher. And uh, also I can see that my respiratory rate is also a little bit higher. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to the Okanagan Graveler for having me. And um, I'll for sure be back 
next year. As usual, take care of yourself by making the most optimal choice in every moment and do the same to take care of the ones you love.